Chemistry is a study of matter and the changes in matter. And all matter is composed of atoms. Whether it's a solid, a liquid, or a gas. And in this book, atoms are represented by different color spheres. So for example, a nitrogen atom might be given a certain color. If you connect two or more atoms together, meaning they're chemically bonded together, then you have a molecule, which could be two of the same elements, like N2. This would be the molecular form of nitrogen compared to one atom of nitrogen, the atomic form, or monatomic nitrogen. Or you could have a molecule composed of two or more atoms where they don't have to be the same element, such as two nitrogens and one oxygen connected into one molecule. All of these elements are on the periodic table. So here's a version of the periodic table. And the periodic table is arranged by the increasing atomic number. The atomic number is simply the number of protons in an atom of that particular element. So for example, this number above the symbol H for hydrogen is a 1. That means there's one proton in every atom of hydrogen. Vanadium would have 23 protons. The number of protons identifies what type of element we're talking about. The periodic table has groups, which are vertical columns, and it has periods, which are horizontal rows. Four of the groups are given special names. Group 1, Group 2, Group 17, and Group 18. So the first two groups and the last two groups. 1 and 2 are the alkali metals and alkaline earth metals. 17 and 18. 17 are the halogens, things like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and so on. 18 are the noble gases. So you should remember those four names of the elements on the periodic table. Also, the periodic table lets you classify elements as being metals or nonmetals. The periodic table we have that you'll have on all of the exams doesn't show that dividing line. So what you should do when you get your periodic table is start here at boron and make a staircase going down and across until you get all the way to the opposite corner. Anything that's on the left side of that staircase we're going to classify as a metal. Anything that's on the right hand side of that staircase we will classify as nonmetals. Now technically some of the elements that touch the staircase are called metalloids but we're only going to look at the two classes metals and nonmetals.